Along. Hmm? <laughs> oh well, if it isn't a great detective Xiong Zixie. To what do I owe this pleasant surprise? I'm sure you didn't come all this way just to see our little holiday celebration. Loopmancer seems to aim towards a handful of admirable ideas, like satisfying 2.5D combat, an authentic spin on the cyberpunk setting, a story about repeating history that stitches everything together, and a couple other little twists and turns here and there. While the game doesn't seem like it sticks the landing on everything, my time with it so far has revealed that it does get enough things right to be a reasonably compelling experience for those who find themselves drawn to its flashy combat and attractive setting. Loopmancer doesn't make an outstanding first impression, the character animations are stiff, the voice acting is even stiffer, and it doesn't seem to be doing much with the oversaturated cyberpunk aesthetic to justify its use over any other one. Dave Ray, what's got you in such a rush? The main character is about as bland as it gets, and with the stilted delivery of his lines, I find him pretty hard to care about. In fact, the only character that stands out to me at all is the main villain. He has a wackiness to him that's hard not to enjoy. While the animations and performances didn't really seem to improve in my playtime thus far, I was eventually introduced to enough other elements that fit in the setting to make it feel a little more purposeful than it seemed at first, but I'll get to those a little bit later. More important to a game like this than its look and story, however, is the combat, and here I'd say the game probably shines brightest. Hand-to-hand -hand bashing of enemies over the head with blunt weapons and slashing through them with sharp ones is undeniably fun. It won't be long before you'll be doing more convoluted actions too, like dashing behind them as they're winding up for a hit, or blasting away at them with your guns to soften them up before going in for the kill. The combat is fast, and at times quite so, and you'll also find yourself up against many enemies at a time, who are all attacking you at once. It's fun and manageable, but this can make it functionally impossible to address any one enemy's specific patterns which the controls and tutorials seem to be encouraging you to do. Instead, you'll often find yourself hacking and blasting away at clouds of enemies and whittling them down as they chase you around the immediate area. Different melee weapon choices feel less consequential than they want to be because of this. Thankfully, with the combat being as responsive as it is, and with the vertical and horizontal platforming giving you lots of directional freedom, the action is ultimately pretty fun and intuitive to keep control of. Your basic melee attacks are accompanied by fun, flashy animations, and your gun is useful in wearing down some enemies from a distance. Other abilities like mines, grenades, and AoE blasts are also available, and some have cooldowns while others are limited to certain amounts of ammunition that will occasionally need replenished the camera being far enough away to see all relevant enemies on screen at pretty much any time fits the combat well. Though sometimes foreground objects like columns can obscure important indicators that warn you when enemies are about to launch a powerful attack, or explosives are getting ready to blow, which, in a game where timing is so important, can make big hits and deaths feel completely unfair. It seems like perhaps the game was envisioned to be a bit more tactical and plotting, but ended up emerging as something different and a little looser, and they just went with it. Nothing inherently wrong with that, but perhaps some level design choices and combat fundamentals could have been updated to match that. Acquiring new weapons and abilities can be done in a couple different ways. Between each loop, our protagonist can pick from a selection before heading out, or you can invest in new weapons out in the field as you come across them. It'll take a few passes to fully buy one, but it will result in better gear. Also, Funk the robot seems to always be selling things, but those are often out of reach as well at first, as the game expects you to put some time into saving up for things. Speaking of the loops themselves, it seems that repetition is a major facet of the gameplay here, and I can easily see this being the game's most divisive element for most, as each death will result in losing all of your progress through the level, even after defeating a boss and having to start over. For me, it makes the game feel a little arduous, and the fact that the level layout occasionally changes doesn't do much to break up the inherent repetition in this sort of game design. But I can certainly see how perfectionists who enjoy tearing through the same set of challenges over and over again to perfect their execution could get something out of it. The loops themselves are bookended by visits to your apartment and an office where you talk to the same few characters before heading out again. The other characters don't seem to be aware of the fact that history is repeating like the hero and you are, which might wind up being an interesting narrative device later on. 
These sections are clearly meant to provide breathers between battles, but winding up here multiple times in short succession quickly feels more obnoxious than anything, especially given that most of the characters have almost nothing important to say most of the time and just repeat themselves. The game tries to make multiple visits less repetitive by switching up the dialogue between a few different options, but it doesn't help much. Petting your cat is probably the best part of these sections, and I doubt that was the intent. I found myself getting bored of these parts and just wanting to jump back into the action well before the game wanted me to. Overall, more of this game will need to be experienced before I can really make a call on whether my handful of gripes are enough to truly hold it back from being recommendable. But as it stands, it does feel like a quintessential mixed bag. Almost everything I like has something holding it back, and everything I dislike has something redeemable about it. Combat is often fun and satisfying, but some level design choices and two similar melee weapons threaten to dry up the fun. While I'm not a huge fan of the voice acting, the characters were clearly designed with a lot of thought. I'm not quite sure if either of these two things will wind up as net positives or net negatives for others, but for me it seems to be struggling to come together as much more than a fun way to maybe spend an afternoon before moving on to something else. Thankfully, it seems to run well and can clearly deliver on a number of important fronts, but with it limiting its own appeal in other ways, I'm not particularly up or down on it. That said, I can definitely see it resonating with some, especially in small doses. That I just said, I'll catch you and break your damn legs. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.